what the rock is cooking. Here we go, the big one. 133,000 votes were cast, and 71% of you said you wanted a bell to bell on The Rock. It's been long enough, so here we go. The first and last matches of The Great One. As the son of Rocky Johnson, The Rock had wrestling in his blood. The Brahma Bull was born into the legendary Anawati family, so it seemed like he was destined for the squared circle. Despite all the success he'd achieved later in his life, The Rock had a difficult childhood. While living in Hawaii, Rock was involved in a theft ring, and by the age of 17, he had already been arrested eight times. However, spending time in the gym and playing sports helped young Rock escape that life. In 1990, the Great One received a full-ride scholarship to the University of Miami and began playing football. Upon graduation, the Rock would continue his football career in his father's homeland when he signed with the Canadian football team, the Calgary Stampeders. Unfortunately, Rock's football career was cut short when he was let go by the team after just two months. As they say, when one door closes, another opens, and The Rock decided to pursue a career in his family's business. With help from Pat Patterson, The Rock was given a few tryout matches with WWE. The company liked what they saw and signed The Rock in June of 1996. Only a few months after that, The Rock would make his TV debut. In November 1996, The Rock, who was known as Rocky Maivia at the time, came to the aid of Mark Romero, who was leading the Survivor Series team The Rock was a part of. Speaking of which, that's where The Rock would make his in-ring debut. On November 17, 1996, The Great One would have his first match in WWE. Just like another legendary wrestler, The Undertaker, The Rock made his in-ring debut as part of a Survivor Series team. As I mentioned, Mark Merrill led Rocky's team while Triple H capped into the opposing side. The Rock wouldn't get tagged in until several minutes into the match, but things went downhill just seconds after the tag. Crush forced the young Rock into his corner and tagged in Jerry Lawler. Despite the rough start, The Rock quickly bounced back and showed off his athleticism before knocking Lawler down with a dropkick. That was too much for Jerry, so the King tagged in another King. Triple H nailed The Rock with an onslaught of aggressive offense and didn't allow the debuting star a chance to fight back. Goldust then tagged in and hit a few moves before tagging out with Crush. The Hawaii native continued where his teammates left off by wailing on The Rock. With the Great One sufficiently incapacitated, Jerry Lawler re-entered the match. The Rock wasn't able to get in any offense, even against the King, and to make matters worse, Triple H soon tagged back in. This time though, The Rock was able to land a few shots on his future rival. Rocky then performed a back body drop, allowing him just enough time to tag in Jake the Snake. The Rock recovered on the ring apron as the match continued. One by one, all of his teammates would be eliminated, leaving only him against Goldust and Crush. Crush managed to sucker in the third generation wrestler and take control. However, Rock quickly countered with a roll up, and while he didn't get the pin, the Brahma Bull was able to start building momentum. Goldust then got involved, but The Rock managed to stay on top of both men. Even when they tried to double team him, The Rock was able to use his opponent's own offense against them, which allowed him to pin Crush. Now it's just one opponent left, The Rock's first win was almost in sight. Goldust did his best to fight back, but The Rock was unstoppable. The Great One hit the bizarre one with a shoulder breaker, and the match was over. Not quite The Rock bottom, but it did the job. The goal here was to get The Rock over with audiences, and I think they accomplished that. When it came down to the Rock against Crush and Goldust, you could hear the crowd chanting Rocky. They put him in the underdog position, which is a classic way to get fans behind someone, and it worked here. Of course, one new guy being able to beat two established wrestlers can cause audiences to reject someone, and that is what would happen later. On the topic of later, let's see what happened next in Rock's career. The momentum Rock gained at Survivor Series continued to grow. About four months after his debut, the Great One defeated Triple H to win the Intercontinental Championship in February 1997. The Bravo Bulls' first title run didn't last too long, but he did successfully defend the IC belt at WrestleMania against the Sultan, aka Rikishi. Shortly after losing the Intercontinental Championship in April 1997, The Rock suffered a real knee injury. This forced Rock to take time off, and he wouldn't return until August of that year. When he did come back, a pivotal moment in The Rock's career would unfold. During a match against Farouk and Chains, the referee accidentally got knocked down. During that moment, The Rock made his return by running in from the crowd. Without warning, Rocky hit Chains with The Rock bottom and turned heel in the process. He joined up with the Nation of Domination and officially started calling himself The Rock and speaking in third person. A few months later, at D-Generation X in your house, The Great One had his first match with arguably his most iconic rival, Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
The two wrestled for Stone Cold's Intercontinental Championship, but The Rock wasn't able to pick up the win that evening. However, the next night, Vince McMahon ordered Steve Austin to defend the title again. The Texas Real Estate instead just gave The Rock the IC Championship, but he also threw in a Stone Cold Stunner too. The Rock held the Intercontinental title for a good chunk of 1998, with notable defenses against Ken Shamrock. During this time, The Rock would overthrow Farouk as the leader of the Nation of Domination. With Rocky now in charge, the group was shortened to just the Nation. This led to a faction rivalry between the Nation and D-Generation X, and naturally gave way to a feud between the two leaders, The Rock and Triple H. The rivalry built up all the way to SummerSlam, where they faced off in a ladder match for the Intercontinental title. The Rock's championship reign finally came to an end that night, but something greater was just around the corner. Post SummerSlam, The Rock entered a tournament to crown a new WWE Champion. He made it to the finals, where his last opponent was Mankind. During the match, Rock locked his opponent in the sharpshooter. Despite Mankind not tapping out, Vince McMahon ran in and called for the bell, a clear reference to the Montreal Screwjob one year prior. In addition to winning the WWE Championship, The Rock also aligned himself with Vince and Shane McMahon. This was the beginning of one of the most iconic rivalries in Rock's career. For the rest of 1998 and into 1999, The Rock and Mankind had several matches with each other, including their I Quit match at the Royal Rumble and their famous Empty Arena match. In the course of their feud, The Rock became a three-time WWE Champion, even if all of his wins were in controversial fashion. Rock's rivalry with Mankind did end with the Great One as Champion, but a new challenge was right around the corner. Stone Cold Steve Austin earned the right to challenge for the WWE Championship, causing him and Rock to square off at WrestleMania 15. Like their previous encounters in 1997, Rock was unable to defeat Steve Austin and lost the belt on top of it. Despite the loss, The Rock's popularity was still rising, so it only made sense to turn him face. At Backlash, Shane McMahon betrayed the Brahma Bull during The Rock's rematch with Stone Cold. Now as a good guy, The Rock would feud with Vince and Shane McMahon, as well as various members of the corporate ministry, including Triple H and The Undertaker. During this time, Rock would team up with his former rival Mankind. Their tag team was called The Rock and Sock Connection, and this alliance resulted in The Great One becoming a three-time World Tag Team Champion. However, Mankind wasn't the only person The Rock would soon form an alliance with. At the 2000 Royal Rumble, the plan was for The Rock to win the match by eliminating The Big Show. However, The Rock's feet accidentally hit the floor first. This got turned into a storyline, with Big Show arguing he was the true winner. In the end, the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania 2000 became a four-way elimination, with The Rock, Big Show, Mankind, and Triple H, the champion. To add more drama, each wrestler had a member of the McMahon family in their corner, with Vince on the Rock's side. This alliance ended up being Rocky's downfall, as Mr. McMahon hit the People's Champion with a chair and helped Triple H retain the WWE title. However, The Rock wouldn't have to wait long to get his revenge. Rock fought Triple H for the WWE Championship at Backlash, and thanks to outside interference from Stone Cold, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment became the new WWE Champion. The Rock would lose the title back to Triple H Judgment Day, but won it back at the next pay-per-view, King of the Ring, making him a five-time WWE Champion. His fifth title reign was The Rock's longest, but it finally came to an end at No Mercy, where, in a very chaotic match, Kurt Angle defeated The Great One. The Rock would make the record straight a few months later at No Way Out 2001. He avenged his loss by beating the Olympic gold medalist and winning back the WWE Championship. Just like in 1999, Stone Cold Steve Austin was in line for a WWE title match at WrestleMania X7. The two megastars went at it for a second time on the grandest stage of them all in one of the best WrestleMania main events ever. Similar to the year prior, the Brahma Bull lost to the Rattlesnake thanks to Vince McMahon interfering. Shortly after WrestleMania, The Rock would take time off to film The Scorpion King, a foreshadowing of where his career would go. Once Rock returned, the Invasion storyline was in full force, where WWE was trying to fight off WCW and ECW. The Rock sided with WWE and was even a member of their team at Survivor Series. In the winner-takes-all match, it finally came down to The Rock on WWE side and Steve Austin on WCW and ECW side. Thanks to some assistance from Kurt Angle, The Rock beat Stone Cold, giving Team WWE the win, as well as payback for his defeat at WrestleMania. Jumping ahead to 2002, Hulk Hogan, along with Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, made their return to WWE at the No Way Out pay-per-view. The Hulkster set his sights on The Rock, leading to the Icon vs. Icon match at WrestleMania X8. In another classic WrestleMania match, The Rock successfully defeated Hulk Hogan. 
Like after his match with Steve Austin the previous year, The Rock took some time off from wrestling, following his match with Hogan. While he wouldn't be gone for too long, The Rock wouldn't be in WWE for much longer. Upon his return, The Rock became WWE Champion again after beating Kurt Angle and Undertaker at Vengeance. This was the lead-in to the 2002 SummerSlam, where The Rock would take on Brock Lesnar. The match is another classic, and is one of the defining moments in Brock Lesnar's career. The Rock would once again take time off from WWE after losing to Lesnar, but he did help make a star before leaving. Because of his focus on acting, fans began booing The Rock, so when he returned in January 2003, The Great One became a heel again. He had a rematch against Hulk Hogan shortly after returning, where The Rock once again had his hand raised. Now that the momentum was on his side, Rock went after one of his oldest rivals, Stone Cold Steve Austin. To avenge his two WrestleMania defeats at the hand of Stone Cold, The Rock challenged Austin to a third and final match. The Rattlesnake accepted, and the two met one last time at WrestleMania 19. It was a tough match, but after three consecutive Rock Bottoms, The Rock finally did it. He finally defeated Stone Cold in a one-on-one -on -one match. The Rock would have a brief rivalry with a debuting Goldberg after his WrestleMania bout. The feud ended at Backlash, where the Great One lost to the WCW star. For the next couple of years, The Rock would continue to make appearances every once in a while, and even wrestled a match in 2004. Once his WWE contract expired though, The Rock mainly focused on acting. Over the next few years, The Rock would make appearances in WWE, but usually in the form of a pre-recorded video. That changed though in 2011. On February 14th, the People's Champion appeared live on Raw for the first time in 7 years, and he was also announced as the host of WrestleMania 27. On that note, during the Raw before WrestleMania, The Rock made another appearance, but was confronted by the WWE Champion, The Miz and Alex Riley. In true wrestling fashion, this led to a brawl, but Rock was able to hold his own and fought the two off. John Cena, though, had other plans, and laid out the Bravo Bowl with an attitude adjustment. In hindsight, probably not the smartest move on Cena's end. At WrestleMania, in addition to hosting the show, Rock would get his revenge. During Miz and John Cena's match for the WWE title, the Great One came out and Rock bottom Cena, allowing Miz to win and retain his title. The next night, Rock and John Cena met in the ring and agreed to face each other at next year's WrestleMania in the main event. Even with the match scheduled, we wouldn't have to wait till 2012 to see The Rock back in the ring. Later in 2011, it was announced that The Rock would participate in a Survivor Series match. It ultimately became a tag team match, with Rock teaming up with John Cena to take on The Miz and R-Truth. In his first WWE match in over 7 years, The Rock got the win for his team. The partnership didn't last long, as shortly after the bell rang, Rock hit his WrestleMania opponent with a rock bottom. The Rock would continue to make appearances on Raw, but it all led up to April 1st, 2012. At WrestleMania 28, WWE's two biggest stars finally met in the ring, with a record-breaking number of viewers watching live. Rock and Cena wrestled for over half an hour, and in the end, the People's Champ came out on top. This victory sparked something on The Rock, and he would vow to become a WWE Champion again. We would find out when he would challenge for the WWE title a few months after WrestleMania on Raw 1000. During the special show, The Rock announced he'd compete for the WWE Championship at the 2013 Royal Rumble. CM Punk, who is the reigning WWE Champion, confronted The Rock and later turned heel by attacking the Brahma Bull at the end of the show. Following the assault, The Rock would be absent from TV until January 2013. In preparation for his Royal Rumble match, The Great One made appearances on Raw and SmackDown and confronted CM Punk, who is still the title holder. The two finally clashed at the Royal Rumble, where Rock not only ended Punk's over year-long title reign, but also became an 8-time WWE Champion. Punk and Rock had a rematch at Elimination Chamber, but take a wild guess who won that. Anyways, John Cena had won the Royal Rumble match, and since The Rock was the current WWE Champion, the Invisible Man chose to face the Great One a second time. Now, we're going to do something a little different on Bell to Bell, and we're going to talk about The Rock's final two WWE matches. You'll see why in a bit. For now, let's jump into The Rock's second to last WWE match at WrestleMania 29. In front of over 80,000 fans, The Rock and John Cena prepared to lock up for a second time. Cena was the first to hit a move by landing a shoulder on Rock. The WWE Champion was quickly back to his feet, and after a standoff, the two went at it again. The Rock then hit John Cena with a shoulder block, and the match paused again. Once they were back at it, the People's Champ hit Cena with a hip toss, causing the leader of the C-Nation to exit the ring. Once John Cena was back inside the ropes, the match really kicked off. 
The man in the cargo shorts began landing punch after punch on the rock. Rocky, though, was able to literally bounce back and take control. Unlike last time, the rock stayed on Cena, even going to the outside to inflict damage. John Cena wasn't done, though, and used a clothesline to take back the match. Rock then found himself fighting out of a headlock, which he countered by locking John Cena in a sleeper hold. The victory didn't last long, as Cena fought out of the hold with his signature slam. The WWE Champion's body continued to be beaten by John Cena, but thanks to some quick thinking and a Samoan drop, the Great One evened the playing field. The match then became a back and forth battle. Just as soon as one man was starting to build momentum, the other would counter and take over. At one point, The Rock was getting ready to hit the rock bottom, but John Cena countered with the STF. The Brahma Bull managed to fight out of it, but Cena wouldn't let up. Big Match John landed the five knuckle shuffle and almost hit the AA. The Rock prevented that from happening, only for John Cena to lock in the STF again. This time though, The Rock rips Cena's hands off and then successfully connected with the rock bottom. When that didn't end the match, the Doctor of Thugonomics responded with an attitude adjustment. Rock went stayed down for the pin though, so John Cena took things to the next level. A top rope leg drop missed, allowing Rock to perform a spine buster, followed by the people's elbow. Once both wrestlers were back on their feet, a slugfest ensued. The Rock then went for a crossbody, which Cena countered into an AA, which Rock countered into a rock bottom. Since that didn't get the win, The Rock was going to take a page out of John Cena's book, but Rocky's five knuckle shuffle was countered by an AA. Both men eventually got back on their feet and began throwing punches again. The fist fight came to an end when Cena stole the rock bottom. That wasn't enough to win the match, so John Cena then went for the people's elbow. Unlike their match a year earlier, where Rock caught Cena with a rock bottom, Cena tried to prevent that from happening a second time, but the Great One still landed his signature finisher. With the match still going, both men attempted to hit each other with their respective signature moves. Realizing the battle was going nowhere, Rock planted his rival with a DDT. Now that the challenger was stunned, the Rock got ready to hit one final rock bottom. At the last moment, Cena turned things around and executed the attitude adjustment for the last time to win the fight and the WWE Championship. This match was, and still is, incredible. Even today, knowing who's gonna win, I was still into it with how many counters each guy threw at each other. As I noted, there's a lot of moments where the action just stops, but I never felt like that made the match boring. I think that's because of the crowd and how vocal they were for everything that happened. It was a fantastic way for The Rock to end his in-ring career. Except that it wasn't. Let me explain. After his rematch with John Cena, The Rock would go back to making sporadic appearances. While he wouldn't wrestle, he would get physical sometimes. He even appeared at the next three WrestleManias, and in 2016, he technically had a match. At WrestleMania 32, the Great One walked out with a flamethrower and marched towards the ring. He would announce that the event had broken the WrestleMania attendance record, but was then interrupted by the Wyatt family. The Rock responded by challenging them to a match, and Eric Rowan stepped up. After the awkwardly long stare down, the bell rang. Rock hit the rock bottom, one, two, three, the match was over in six seconds. So that was technically the rock's last match. See why I also talked about his second to last match? Anyways, after Rowan was defeated, the Wyatts surrounded the ring. Luckily, John Cena ran in to provide some backup. The former WrestleMania opponents teamed up and took care of business. It was a really cool moment seeing two of the biggest stars together and a nice way to end what was technically The Rock's last WWE match. Since then, The Rock has continued to make appearances in WWE, but officially retired from wrestling in 2019. Although, there are rumors saying he'll be coming back, so who knows. What's your favorite Rock moment? Share it with us in the comments. Also, be the first person to comment and like this video, and you'll receive a shout out in the next Bell to Bell. This video's shout out goes to Legboy929. Thanks for supporting the show, Lake Boy. Until next time, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.